In today's video, we have a message from King J or Jackie. Um, this player has been going through a lot of, you know, heat in his kingdom and also outside of his kingdom. This player is, for what I know, is a brand new player. He's seen the videos that we have done. He left me a message here because there's a lot of comments going through within each video. Now, if you guys want to see more of the contents that we're making here, especially with the 2953 progression here with Jackie, consider subscribing and turn your notification on. There's a lot of message in here, but he's trying to get his point across to let everyone understand why he's a little bit different than the normal player in Rise of Kingdoms. And it's not a bad thing that he's different than many players in Rise of Kingdoms. For what I've gathered, for what I have heard, and what I have understand so far with all the situations brewing, is that his approach is so different than the players that are, you know, that are with him within the game that these players did not like it. And basically there's altercation happening, them talking bad to Jackie, Jackie eventually talking bad and this is pretty much where everything leads into. So today, he sent me, oh my god, I, I feel bad for him for sending me all these messages because I can see how passionate he is to play this game. And he truly enjoys the game of Rise of Kingdoms. And at this moment, I could tell you that what I see is a pure gamer who just wants to have fun playing the game and get rid of all the external stuff. So... He wants to voice out because I'm sure, I mean, you're not going to type so many freaking messages in here. You're not going to type all of that if you're not so passionate and wants to get your point across. Um, so let's read through this and kind of, you know, see what we can think about of what he's saying in here, um, if it's valid or not. So he says, here, I don't know how many of you will hear from the beginning, and I don't know how many of you know the history between me and Marsh. Or Sheyang, I don't know who who that player is. So right now he's giving us some of the backstory on how things kind of unfolded in 2953. Because, uh, you know, there's always two sides of the story. And today we're presenting you Jackie's side in here. And maybe players in the, uh, you know, the old players in 2953 can kind of read through this and listen and see if some of these things are valid. And you guys can comment, of course. You guys are free to do that. But Jackie is here, is presenting his side. So he says, How we know each other, it is important that you know the history of the Alliance JJMD. For me, I didn't really know what JJMD is. I kind of only knew the UFO side. Um, as you learn the purpose and goal that me and Sheyang um, have been aiming for and trying to achieve just a little over a month ago while playing Rock. I heard that there are some rogue players running around, killing everybody, causing trouble for the kingdom. At that time, I was the top one alliance of this kingdom, and I was sent to zero Marsh, or saying. So wait, um, okay, he's sent to zero this saying player, okay, and to stop whatever he's doing. So I went to stop him during the fight. Um, I had a chance to chat with him, and after chatting with him and sharing our views toward Rise of Kingdoms, we find that we have similar views which differs from what top alliances are doing in the kingdom. So I decided not to zero him back to become friends. Ever since that day, we would fight together, we would fight big alliances, take the gates and holy sites, giving it to small alliances that were being ignored and collected. Of course, the top alliance did not like us because they are losing benefits but we are doing it for the weaker players that has no say in the kingdom. Is he kind of a Robin Hood here with this statement? Ah, pretty cool though. I had a similar thing that I did back in K41. Um, you know, Top Alliance were bullying the free-to-play alliance. And me and my brother, we were playing. We told them, hey, stop fucking zeroing these players. Stop killing them on MGE. Like, stop bullying them. And that's one of the reasons why we had Civil War in 41 and we ended up me leaving in 41 because we couldn't handle the bullies anymore. Um, anyway, so, I, I mean, at this statement, he's not saying any bullies or bullying anything in here. He's just saying that the weaker alliances were not getting, um, you know, anything. They're not getting any benefits. So it seems like what Jackie's trying to do here is, like, 
you know, they're weak. Let's give them something so we can retain them in the game and, the, you know, they can enjoy the game. They can play because if you just strip everything and not give anything to the weak players, I get it. Certain players will eventually leave because it's not fun for them. They're not getting any progress. So what I can see here is Jackie is trying to accommodate for the weak players so that they can be kept in the game and continue to play. So... Um, that's his approach. A little bit too generous approach in here, I could see. Um, but we're doing it for the weaker players that has no say in the kingdom and could not do anything about it because they are too weak. Anyway, after one day, after finishing fight a war, Marshall Shang said to me, I want to try to become a leader of an alliance. I want to have my own alliance. So he said I supported him and I said to him, one day you will become a leader of an alliance for sure. I know you can do it. And after that day, and after that day, me and Marsh had tried to create our own alliances, but failed due to not enough members want to join us. We could not even start to build the first fortress, but we kept trying, and one day, opportunity presented itself. I think I've heard this part of the story from um, from other players from the UFO. I think this is, this is the part where I kind of heard. I, I did read some of the messages, too. Um, while we are fighting another top alliance to try to get the holy sites to give... To smaller alliances, the leader contacted me and said he wants to give the leadership position to me in the, um, in, I guess that's kind of in in return. I guess uh, here's a continuation. Um, in return, in return, he asked for his alliance and his members to be looked after. Immediately, I thought of Marsh. He here's an opportunity to make Marsh wish come true to become a leader of an already established alliance with the, its territory widely expanded. And has a lot of members. Everything is already done for you. It's just get in the leader's posi position and lead. Therefore, I immediately told him to give the R5 leader um, position to Marsh instead of me. After that day, me and Marsh had agreed that the only way to help the weaker players at that kingdom level is to become king of this kingdom. I mean, it's, it's, it's a fairly good statement, I would say. Um, that way we can set the direction of this kingdom so that there are no rules that will take things from weaker players and give it to all just top 10 stronger players or top 10 strongest players in the kingdom. We consulted and we both agreed that because I am much stronger, I would have much better chance of becoming king. So we assigned roles to each other. And that is for me to go and take down all the top alliances that are enforcing all these rules taking everything for themselves. Ooh, okay, so this is where all the juicy stuff begins. While Marsh saying would be building his will be building this alliance and getting the members ready for both mentally and physically to support me in whatever way I need. So we made a promise to each other that we will always be supporting each other in every way that our friendship is more important than the game, so we will not betray each other. Okay. So after Believing that I had a strong base, strong alliance to back me up, I shouldn't need anything. Um, I go on my way and do things to try to become king. And one of the things is to do is I had to jump in many alliances to try to gain allies. That is why it, it may seem like I change alliance often, but it is not that. Nobody knows. And they kept guessing everything. And I have never told the real reason to anyone until this day. Anyway, I must admit that after the time has paused, I had feeling that March is not able to give Rock much time. And I respect that because I understand people have things to do in real life. Not everybody have equal time can be sacrificed to Rise of Kingdoms. And that's why I was trying to find add a group of people that is mind based as my supporters, as my allies, because March is not available. So he's trying to form his group here. He's trying to for his, you know, trying to form his R4, um, which is practical. Still, while trying to achieve these goals on my own, I may do the wrong thing sometimes because I'm just a normal guy. I love that. Um, you know, we make mistakes. Uh, he says he's a normal guy trying. I don't know everything, so I have to try everything sometimes. And it turns out to be right sometimes, and it turns out to be wrong. It's normal. And also because I'm thinking alone, you can get difficult and overwhelmed sometimes. So here, what we can see is, you know, the person behind the gamer. Anyway... It says here, so here we are today. Now you're updated and every, and know everything from the beginning. I don't know if you all agree with my goal of what I want to do about helping weaker players and not just sacrificing everything for KVK. 
But to live every day to the fullest and enjoy it, rock for for other aspects other than KVK. Not saying that we want to play KVK. We will play KVK. Or I think what he means, not saying that we don't want to play KVK is what he means. And he is going to play KVK and we will do our best. But we will view it as a normal event. For uh, We will not be sacrificing from other days just for KVK. So I kind of relate into this. Um, within Rise of Kingdoms, KVK is so heavily enforced. Like even me playing in Imperium Kingdom with 1412, everything is all about KVK. I mean, even here in 1382, everything is all about KVK. But people try to forget like, Secure a, a good kingdom. Secure a, a a culture. You know, secure that first. That's the most important thing. Um, I play another game called Infinite Galaxy. I don't know if anybody knows that game. Within that game, I have a good core team of people, and you know, we deal with bullies there and, and that game as well. But within that game, we have great culture. We're not the strongest. We're not the weakest. We're just moderate, and. The, the culture really is we're tightly bonded. I talk to them with my day-to-day -day life as well. Um, and that's also something that I am missing in Rise of Kingdoms. You know, I've left my team from back in 20, 1253. Um, I left 1228. I think some of my teammates probably have quit the game as well. But back then when I first started in 1253, we had such a strong bond. And we didn't really care about what KVK is going to bring us. What we cared about is like, hey, we get to play with each other and it's fun. And we had a lot of Discord laughter. And that's, to me, I can relate to what Jackie's trying to say here. So, because some part of what he's experiencing is I actually been through it. And I wasn't just powerful before to be able to implement certain things. And this is why I somewhat like his ideology. Um, here's another thing that he says. But you don't have to agree with me because I think that is normal to have people think the same as yourself. And also to help people that think differently. Because of this, it is important that we learn to live peacefully in a society that is diverse in everything. Because in everything or every issue, there will always be people who think differently to you. Don't say that people who think differently to, differently to us are bad people. It is not always true. Sometimes it is true though, lol. <laughs> okay, lol. So, um, okay, I was saying if you don't agree with me and would like to talk to me more about it, please do so. I'm open to opinion. And although... You agree with me or not, I will try to make, I will try and make this kingdom as comfortable and you have as little rules that restrict what you can or cannot do as possible, of course. They will have to be some rules, but compared to other kingdoms, it will be much more relaxing for you. Trust me, I try my best for you all and if I'm not good enough in anything, please recommend me because I'm doing everything on my own. That will, that, that, that will be some mistake. And things can be slow because I'm doing 100 things at once. But I will try my best. If you want to contact me, please don't send chat because I don't see chat as I get 100 chats every day. I cannot read them all. Please send me an in-game mail instead. Thank you. All right. So kind of break this down a little bit in here. Um, what King J or Jackie wants to do is pretty much is like set a minimal rule to where players can have fun. I think one of the biggest issues that caused all these things is also the MGE. Um, I think for, for his idea, I think he wants to have a little bit more freedom with MGE, not just all the top players winning all the time. So that means that he probably will not try to win them sometimes as well to let other people win. So, but it allows more of a free range competition. I kind of like that idea because in every kingdom that I've been through, there's always controlled MGE. But back then when I was in 1228, there wasn't really a controlled MGE. It was like free for all. And like, if you have the speed ups, you go for it, you go ham, it kind of a little bit more freedom. It's kind of fun. Um, of course, if there are whales, but you can always talk to whales, say, hey, can I compete for this time? Um, this is pretty interesting because this is kind of like going back to the beginnings of KVK. And I kind of liked it, I kind of disagreed on controlled MGE actually, when it first kind of like what people try to do. The main purpose of the controlled MGE is to not to do overspending, which is good and bad for the kingdom. It allows certain players as well to uh, get the, you know, certain commanders. But majority of the time, I don't know if many of you guys experience this because I've experienced this in a kingdom that I was in before. I'm not going to say the number. Um, sometimes when you do MGE and if it's controlled, there is favoritism and there is bias to who to give the commander slots first place or second place or a top 10. So 
with King Jay doing here, I think his ideology, if I get it correctly, is pretty much removing that system of bias on trying to give you know certain you know factions of players to always win the you know MGE. So you know, you guys are feel free, of course, to leave a comment with with, with the conversation that we're having here. Definitely want to hear from you guys in the comment section. Wow, there's so many messages. All right, so let's see this one. Um, zone 3 is very important because whoever built flag or fortress next to the lost temple can take the king's title. I have many enemies and many enemies try to get into zi inside zone 3 to take the temple, especially UFO. Some UFO are still in KD-53. Normally, zone 3 will be restricted to only the king's alliance for safety reasons, which is fair and that's true. You have to understand that getting going to zone 3 is not something that everybody can go into. There are many bad people that infiltrate into many alliances. And they just wait for opportunity when nobody is looking. Go up to the Lost Temple and build a fortress and take the king's title. I know that you want to gather more resources, but you need to think about other people also. Not just to think about, I want more resources, I want more resources. That's true. And also they can attack your farmers if they're in the same zone. Um, and Marsh saying has not been strict about B8. I don't know who B8 is. Many new members join in B8 and I ask who is this and what he does not know. So there is a risk. So there's a risk in B8 that many unknown members join, and we don't know who's friend and who's spy. So now, please just be patient. Zone 3 is not for public place. If anybody can go in and out of Zone 3, then there will be a lot of trouble. And even if you cannot go inside Zone 3 now, you can still gather in Zone 2 and Zone 1, which is true. Um... All the difference is the resource nodes are a little bit smaller, but that does not mean that you have less resources. So I guess he's just trying to make sure that the, the people that are coming into the zone is secured and, you know, it's, it's trusted and they're not going to cause any trouble, which is fair. A resource node in zone two takes many more, many hours to finish anyway. So you just need to log in a bit more often, but the other speed and everything are the same. It is not much different. Yeah. Um, if you want to have a chance of going to zone three faster, then help me. Help me to get rid of the enemy. Help me fight them. Help me say something when UFO comes and talks, sh I guess, shit about me badly in the kingdom chat. So my question is, players in this kingdom, how much does UFO say stuff in the kingdom chat against Jack? Um, I have never asked any of you for help because I tried to do everything by myself. I tried to make this kingdom a place for everyone. In other kingdoms, they have all these rules restricting you from doing so many things. Wow. They will all have these rules that will take away what you should have and give it to the only those who participate in KVK. Give it to the top three players, top five players. For example, if you're not strong into the kingdom, you are just like a slave. And a lot of players, weaker players, they don't like it, but they cannot do anything about it because they are not powerful enough. Well, I kind of like this. He's kind of like a Robin Hood to me right now. Rock has been dominating by strong players who tells everyone that KVK is the most important thing or the most important. And to do everything, sacrifice, everything takes away uh, everything from the weak players and give it already to the already strong players to make them even stronger to fight in KVK. And yeah, a lot of people don't enjoy it. Eventually, people quit. Um, in most kingdoms, they will have rules where you have to pay taxes, that is to give resources. You got it to the Alliance storage so they can use these resources during KVK. They have fixed MGE, that is the winner, will be fixed to the top 10 strongest players to get them ready for KVK. So there is no open and free competition if you are not in the top 10 strongest player. You have no chance of competing because you don't let you, if you compete, they will zero you. It's true. Um, let me cut this here. Uh, another thing that I can see that, wow, this video is long. Another thing that I can tell you is, in my experience, is that, um, you know, the, all these controlled MGE, it does go to the strongest player. Yes, they do help the kingdom eventually because these strong players can fight and compete. But I think what Jackie's um, mindset in here is not just about winning KVK, but rather, how can I let all these free-to-play um, enjoy and get to win? Because if you're free-to-play, you save up, you know, and you want to compete in one's uh, cave, uh, one MGE, you can do it with this type of ruling that he's trying to approach. Because in in a Imperium Kingdom or in the kingdom where it's pretty strong, if you're free to play and they know you're not going to be able to spend a lot, especially in, you know Season of Conquest, you're never going to get MGE. There's no way you're not the top dog. But with this mindset he's doing is 
it's nice to allow um, some of the weaker players to actually get, um, you know, you know, uh, MGE commanders. It, it's it's a good and bad thing. Um, if you're heavily dominant into KVK results, then this might not be the best, you know, approach. But with his approach, he's like, you know, I don't care much about KVK. He says, I'll have fun. I'll play KVK. But I want these players with me, enjoying the game, able to get the commanders that they want and be be successful. Um, success is defined in many things, you know. And happiness in the game is defined in many things. Here, success to him defines not just about winning KVK, but also you know, of course, he ideally, of course, he wants to win KVK. But for success for him is like having a good core of team, good player base that enjoys the game. I think that was that's what makes him happy when players are, you know, the weaker players are getting the things that they can that they can normally not get from other kingdoms, but they can get it from this kingdom. Uh, so that's you know that's that's me presenting what he's saying here, or like, um, you know, uh, uh, interpreting it for you guys here. Um, I see that this happens in most kingdom, and I think it's unfair for weaker players. I think everybody should have a freedom to enjoy rocking every day, to eat minimum potential, and not have to cater for the desire of the professional players and do everything for a few fighters who will compete in KVK. Wow, that's a big statement. Before, there was nothing the weak of players can do about, or the weak players can do about it, because they're too weak to be heard, not important enough, but now everything is about uh, to change. I'm strong enough to change things. That is why sometimes in the past you saw me having to use force. Sometimes it's necessary to use force. In some occasion, when using reason, people don't just understand. But I have good intentions to change things. Oh my god. Wow. Those are some big statements that... Why... Why now? Where, where did you come when I was starting out? That would have been amazing. Maybe this is a kingdom that I can go to eventually. Maybe I migrate one of my accounts. I don't know. Uh, for now, I'm with a good team. I like the team that I'm with. But this is, this is interesting. Um, I like how... I, like, I kind of like his uh, Robin Hood style, free will type of kingdom in here. Um, if I just go along with other strong players... I like the rebelness. He, he's, he's rebel against strong players. If I just go along with other strong players, I would not do all this for the weak players because none of the stronger players agree with me because they lose what they want and I care for the weaker players. I'm smiling right now because I love this statement. I want everybody to enjoy in the way they want that they can choose how they how do you want to play, not restricted to so many rules. I hope you understand my intention. I'm sorry for not communicating before because I thought it it was being communicated for me already. Huh. Anyway, thank you for your time. And if you don't understand anything, please ask me. I am here for you. One thing, I, one thing, please ask me. And don't listen to other people because no one knows what I'm thinking in my head. No one can read my mind except for myself. And many people don't like me. They will say bad things about me to destroy me. So please just ask me and I will tell you. Don't assume. Thank you. Freaking big statements in here. And there's so much more. Uh, we're going to do a next video for this one. Subscribe to see more. Turn your notification on. Like into the video. This video is a little bit too long. But I like it because uh, I don't want to put label, but he seems like he is the Robin Hood of free to play. Or Robin Hood. Yeah, is that, does that make sense? He wants to give things to the free to play. And this, this is kind of juicy. It's kind of interesting. I want to see what happens next to the kingdom. You know, I, I want to see, you know, how he can build this amazing kingdom and uh, build it with a good uh, culture. You know, once everybody's gone that, you know, disagree with him, giving in, to, you know, giving the weak players a chance for progress in Rise of Kingdoms. Many free-to-play might want to choose this kingdom because if... Other Kingdoms does not give you the opportunity to play the way you want to play. Here with King J, you might be able to just, you know, have a lot of fun and, and enjoy a little bit less rules. Eh, let me know what you guys think. Um, comment down in the comment section below. Feel free. Anyway, rockers, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys again next time. Peace out.